Hi and welcome back. Today we are delving into the heart of the game we are building, Connect 4. Picture this. Board game, 6 rows and 7 columns. Two players take turns dropping colored tokens into the column. The winner is a player who will connect 4 coins of the same color in a row, horizontally, vertically or diagonally. Check out how it looks like in the real life. As you can see, two colors, the coin is put at the end of the column and the first with 4 in line wins. Now the real challenge lies in detecting the winner. To do this, we'll traverse the board from top to bottom and examine each non-empty cell in four directions – right, down, left down and right down. Plus, we'll optimize our algorithm to skip unnecessary checks, like scanning downwards from the bottom row. Let's implement all that we discussed. First, create constants.py file. We'll define number of rows and columns, target number of four coins in line to be a winner, and player values empty for 0, player 1 and player 2 for 1 and 2, and winner for 3. Next, add a core.py file that will have core logic of the game. First, we specify the imports, define the function to initiate an empty board, then we'll add a function to validate the move. It ensures the tokens are placed at the bottom of the column. So, inside we'll check if row and call are not nouns, if they are inbound, if the cell doesn't have a value already, then if it's the last row or the next row isn't empty, Always good. Now let's test our implementation. First, we'll add PyTest to the project. Then we'll create tests folder with init.py and test core.py files there. In test core.py, we first define our board and then add different test cases using parameterize. We specify different moves and then check if the returned value is as expected. For example, the first test case checks if the last item in the first call is a valid move. And yes, it is valid. Now let's run our test using PyTest. All tests passed. Next, winner detection. To match a direction, we'll define a data class called direction. It has the name of the direction, condition to check if it's possible to have a winner there, and the function to move towards the direction. Then we have a list of four directions – down, right, left down and right down. Let's take a look at one of them. For example, down. As our board has six rows and the index is from 0 to 5, it's possible to have a winner with condition down only if the row is less than 3. This way, if we are on the item that is on the second row, when the index is 1, we can go down because it's possible to have a winner there. But if we are on the last row, it doesn't make sense to check the winner down, right? Inside our function detect winner, we'll have two loops to iterate the board. If the board item is not empty and it is part of the winner line, we'll return the player who won. Inside our check directions function, we'll iterate each direction from the list. Then use condition function to find if the winner in the direction is possible based on the current row and call position. Then if there are at least target nums of the same values in the line, it's our winner and we can return true. Otherwise, we break the loop. Let's cover this logic with tests. We'll define the skeleton of the test and then add different test cases. First, when the winner is down. Here is the first player one. Here is the second. Next, add cases for right winner. Here is the first player. Again, the first player. Here is the second player. Here is the first player with six items. Next is left down. Second. Here is the first player. Next, write down. Second. And here is the first player one. After this, when there is no winner, just two items and we return none. Also a draw case and another no winner case. If you run our tests, everything is green. Awesome! Considering that the winner can be in different directions at the same time, and we can also have more than 4 items, we need to find all winning lines and mark them. For this, we'll add mark winner function. Before that, we need to update direction data class. Since now we are interested in all the winning lines, not just 4 items in the direction, we should add a function to validate a possible move and return a move's row call pair. Then we add these two functions to each item in the directions list.
After this, we will define our mark winner function. First step, find the winner cells. For this, we will iterate the board, and if it's a winner, we will call the function to check winning lines. Inside the find winner cells function, we will iterate each direction and find a consecutive line of winning elements. If the line length is larger than 4, we will add it to our winner cells. Having all the winner cells, we will update our board to set the winner. Now, tests. As before, we first add the skeleton of our test and then different test cases. The first one is when the winner is down. You can see that now instead of 1, we have 3 in the board. Then, when the winner is right. Next, left down. Here's the case with 5 items. Then, right down. After this, a complex case with multiple winning lines. There are three directions at the same time. Let's run our tests. Everything is green. The final thing for today, we'll update a makefile. Let's add a test command to run tests and run command to start the server. Let's check the commands. And yeah, always good. That concludes our deep dive into Connect4 logic. We've covered game basics, winner detection strategy, implemented core logic, and tested it thoroughly. Thank you for watching. Catch you in the next video. Until then, have a fantastic day. Bye.